What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how your music can go from idea to four, five, six figures from sync licensing. Let's dive into it. This is your boy, Jay Will. I've been a music producer and indie artist for at least seven years now. And I've been doing sync licensing full time for the last five. There's a ton to learn, but I'm gonna share as much as I know so that you start getting your music synced for what it's actually worth. So if you're not familiar with sync licensing, it's the process of giving the permission for your music to be placed in TV, movies, commercials, video games. So if you want more content like this, make sure you slap the like button down below. It looks like this, like this. Now I know what you're thinking. How in the world am I supposed to get my music licensed? Who do I need to know? What hands do I need to get that music in? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all great questions. So I think the best way to actually explain this process is through a story. So gather around, don't mind the desk. So let's say little Johnny, that's you, made this really, really cool hook idea on his guitar. He goes ahead and records his little music. This you, and that's your little music idea. It's right there. He says, oh man, this is a really cool idea. And after he's got his hook and maybe possible lyrics, he records his little music on the little computer. There it is right there. There he is, tap, 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 tap. Now on the computer, he's gotta make sure that everything is sync ready. Meaning he needs to make sure the music gets to the point very quickly because it's different than, again, music that he'd normally put on Spotify. He makes sure the lyrics are more universal for different human experiences. We'll be talking more about this next week so make sure you subscribe for more then he gets to the computer flushes out all the other production ideas tweaks the arrangement and whatnot so it feels like a full-length song and a journey telling a story like we're talking about now he needs to make sure that it's not just a demo but a fully mixed and mastered song which is one of the things that i'd like to talk about so if you guys have other questions make sure you type those in the comments too but your music has to be finished no demos unless someone actually is making the decisions for a tv show specifically asks you for that they're working on strict deadlines and they can't wait until the the next engineer has the availability to mix your song. Just learn how to do it yourself. If you have questions, again, just type them down below. So after the song is printed, what you need to do is go to your respective performing rights organization or PRO for short in either your country or using an international one like BMI or ASCAP. This is super important to the back end of the story. So make sure you stick around to the end because it's going to help you get paid twice for the same song being used in TV and film. So after you got your little music recorded, mixed and mastered and all that kind of stuff, what you could do is to go to the music supervisor, right? Because they're the ones that are making the decisions with the film crew and the director. That's this guy right here on the action. They have to give the A-OK -okay in order for you to actually get your music into the right hands here. But most of us don't know music supervisors, right? So what we should do instead, and this is what I highly advise, is that we go the other route, which is music libraries and sync agents. These two people right here. A music library is normally a company with a vast amount of instrumental music, specifically for TV shows, commercials, video games, to license your music behind moving picture or video media, if you will. Mostly their catalog consists of instrumentals, but that's slowly changing as well. More on this later. What a sync agent is, is basically either an agent of that library or a third party entity that actually has a catalog of artists that might be a lot smaller, but with lyrics. And they do basically the same thing. And both of these entities already have the contacts and relationships with the music supervisors, the music editors, and people of that nature that are actually deciding what music to put behind the big screen pictures. They help you get your music into their hands. Most music supervisors like going this route because they can't trust everybody's music. Music, if it has samples in it, melodic loops, maybe there's 8 million songwriters on it and they need to clear all of them. That's their job as the music supervisor. So they more often than not will work with sync agents and music libraries to find music that they can trust. They know it's great quality. They'll slap it on the video, send it to the director, make sure they're cool with it. And then if they like it, congrats, you just got a sync placement. Now the music supervisor normally is going to have some paperwork to sign with the library or the sync agent, and they're going to ask for permission from you to make sure it's okay to use it. Normally the music libraries and the sync agents are going to help with negotiating negotiating the upfront fees to allow the broadcast or film company to use the master and the composition side of your song, which can be pretty lucrative. After you give them permission, the commercial or TV show airs, and within three to 12 months, then you get a couple racks for your placement. But that's just the first upfront fee. After the show airs, what the film production studio is supposed to do is write out a cue sheet. And what this is basically is a form of receipts showing all the music that they used, what seconds they used, and where in the video that intellectual 
property was being exploited. They send those cue sheets off to everybody's respective performing rights organization. Told you we was coming back to it. Now your PRO is going to read these cue sheets and calculate how your music was used, whether it was in context, out of context, how many ears and eyeballs were on it, all that kind of stuff. And at the end of that number, that is going to be your royalty check for that music being performed and broadcast everywhere. And just like that, that's how your music goes from idea onto the big screen. There's a couple hoops that need to be jumped through in order to do this, but this is how you get paid and retain ownership of your music. And if they want to use it again and the term's over with, according to that sync license, they got to pay for another one, which is really, really great. If you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because in my next one, we're going to talk about what genres specifically have I researched and found are the most lucrative for getting into sync licensing for the highest earning potential. Share this if it helped, like and follow for more.